Laravel's models are extremely convenient because, well, it allows us to do a lot of things. Of course, a model is supposed to represent, you know, data within a database and the relationships of that data. But Laravel gives us the ability to, well, do a lot more. We can grow our models to where they become almost unmanageable. So the question becomes, you know, when do we start to extract functionality? And that's what I want to take a look at today. You know, models are typically thought of as, you know, things, or at least they represent things. It's usually data usually. It's always data inside of a database. And, you know, a lot of times there are relationships to that data. So a model is, is very, well, you can think of it as a thing, whereas, you know, something like a service would be more like a verb. It's going to do something. And a lot of times it's very clear as to, you know, where we want to put, you know, certain code and thinking along those lines can kind of help. But you know, Laravel makes it so easy to add a lot of extra functionality to our models. And a lot of times it makes sense to do it inside of our models. Like for example, this is my user model. And, you know, we have our relationship with the subscriptions so that, you know, we can find the subscriptions that a particular user has, you know, subscribed to. Then there's also this ability to activate a user or deactivate a user. But then we start getting into the realm of business logic. You know, here we have the code for subscribing to a particular plan. And we can make the argument that, well, it kind of makes sense to do that here. Because, you know, we are dealing with a particular user. We are subscribing a plan to a user. So, yeah, it, it kind of makes sense. And, you know, then there's also this cancel subscription. So, of course, we went from something that was very simple to something that's a little more involved. And we could add more functionality here and we could grow this to the point that it's just unmanageable. And I'm not going to say or I'm not going to use the term that we are all guilty of this. Because, you know, guilt implies that we're doing something wrong. And I'm not necessarily sure that this is wrong. I mean, shoot, I've done a lot worse than this. I've done a lot worse than this on screen. And so, you know, something like this, it, it makes sense. But then there are going to be purists that say that, no, you can't do this or you shouldn't do this. This is something that affects other parts of the application because... Yes, we are modifying subscriptions here. So this should be put elsewhere, like a service class. And, you know, I can kind of see that. But if we take a look at the controller, you know, still, this is very simple, you know, at least, you know, because here we are validating the information, getting the user, getting the plan that the user wants to subscribe to, and then we're subscribing. I mean, it's very clear as to what's going on. We can read it. We know really without a doubt what's going on. So this, this is nice. It, it's clean. And I'm going to have a hard time saying that this is wrong, that you shouldn't do this. But on the other hand, I could see that, yeah, we, we are starting to do things here that it's related to the user, but we aren't necessarily doing something with that user. In which case, yeah, we should probably extract this into a service. So let's do that. I already have a services folder inside of my app folder. So I'm just gonna use that and I'm gonna create a new file and we'll call it subscription service.php. Let me make sure I spelled that right. Subscription service. Looks right to me. So that then we, of course, will have our namespace of app services. Then we will have our class of subscription service. And the very first thing that we need is our constructor. So let's go ahead and let's define our constructor. But in this particular case, we are going to need the gateway because if we take a look at the user model, uh, yes, right here, we are doing something with that gateway. So we could do something like this to where we have the protected payment gateway and we'll just 
call that payments. That way we have the gateway available to us. So that then it's just a matter of essentially lifting the functionality that we have outside of the user model and putting it here inside of this service. So we can have a subscribe method to where we have the user and the plan that we want that user to subscribe to. Let's go ahead and let's add use statements for our models there. And then it's just a matter of essentially lifting all of this code and we're gonna paste it here inside of subscribe. Of course, we need to make some changes because now we have this payments and we're going to charge using this payment token, which that doesn't exist, that is from the user. And then we are going to have the cost, which I'm using an integer value for the cost of a plan. This might seem a little weird, but it's very common in financial systems. You would store the cost or the amount or the price of whatever it is as an integer. And then in your software, you would make the decimal place. And that's very useful whenever you are working with multiple different kinds of currencies. That's too deep here. So we are going to make this payment and then everywhere that we have this, we want to change it to the user so that here we are setting the subscriptions so that then we fire off the user subscribed event and then everything works like it did before. The only difference now is that we are doing it inside of the subscription service as opposed to our user model. So we can just take that out. But then we have this cancel subscription, which Let's just cut that out and let's paste that inside of our subscription service. Of course, since we are dealing with subscriptions, it's kind of redundant to say cancel subscription. So we're just gonna say cancel. And once again, this is for a given user and everywhere that we have this, we just want to change with the user. And I, I'm doing something just very silly here. I'm just taking the latest subscription and then we're canceling that. Of course, in a real application, they would be able to choose whichever plan that they wanted to cancel and then cancel that. This is just me being silly. So anyway, that takes all of the functionality, at least as far as subscribing and canceling a subscription to a service, which means that when it comes time to our controller, our code looks something like this to where we will have the subscription service that we want to use. And then we just need to change where we have our user subscribing to a particular plan. We'll just change that to service subscribe. Of course, we do need to pass in the user and we would want to do the same thing for canceling a subscription. So let's just copy what we have there and paste it for the destroy. So that once again, we would call service and it's now just cancel, but then we could pass in the user. And of course we could simplify this a little bit more, but you know, still it's very readable and you can look at these methods and you can understand almost immediately what's going on. The only difference is that now we have taken the, essentially the business logic outside of the user model and placed it inside of a service. So let's go back. What is the correct approach here? And, you know, it's a judgment call. Ultimately, it's up to you which makes the most sense. I mean, because we could make the argument that it made the most sense to have that logic right here instead of our user model. I've done it. You've done it. Everybody's done it. It makes some sense there. But two, the argument for moving it out into a service is, well, it makes a lot of sense too. And this is something that I'm personally wanting to find an answer for because I've done a lot, I'm not gonna say stupid, but I've done a lot of things when it comes to the models and I've just put a bunch of things inside of the model that really probably shouldn't have gone there. So I think for me, my rule of thumb, which is going to be something that I'm going to have to remind myself of in practice, is to treat models like a noun. A model should represent the data, the relationships in that data, and really nothing else. And then if I need to do any kind of action with that data, then move it out into you know, a service makes a lot of sense when you think of it in that way. But then, 
you know, what about these two methods here? Activate and deactivate. You know, these are things that are explicitly for users. There's no other model that's being used here. Nothing else is being manipulated. It is simply updating the data for a particular user. And in that case, you know, I would say that this is fine. Yes, you can make the argument that this is a verb. We are doing something here, but we are doing something with and only with user data. So, yeah. So what what are my new rules that I'm going to follow? I guess nouns are, you know, a model is nouns. We, we do noun things inside of the model, unless if it is a verb that works specifically and only with that particular model, in which case, you know, it makes kind of sense to do that in the model. Anything else, any other business logic, anything else that works with, you know, data from another model, especially if it updates or, or, or makes changes to data in another model, then move that into a service. I think that's what I'm going to do. It's what I'm going to try to do. And maybe there's a better way. I don't know. What do you think? How would you approach this? I'd love to hear your thoughts. 